installment of our Game Maker series. Uh, currently, if you've been following along, you should have a game very much like this, where you can shoot and destroy your enemies. Um, if they go past you, nothing happens. If you collide with an enemy, then your game restarts. In this video, what we want to do is add in some score. So we're going to create uh, something that allows us to show a score value up the top here. Uh, when each of our enemies gets destroyed um, and we might look at adding a bit of a randomization to that score as well. So what we have currently, uh, something like this, we've got our various sprites so far, um, we have our object player, we have our bullet, we have our enemy and we have our controller for our enemies that is uh, creating them and putting them on the screen. Um, what we're going to start with now is getting set up to show the score. So the first thing we actually want to do is create a font. Now I actually have one here, so I'll just remove this for a second and we'll start it from scratch. So by default, uh, Game Make, if you try and draw text onto the screen, it has a built-in font and size and that's all well and good. Uh, but most of the time you want something a little bit more interesting and different sizes and so forth. So we start by creating a font that we'd like to use. And you can basically add as many fonts as you want. You might have different fonts for headings and score and lives and so forth. Um, we're just going to create one for the moment. Now, when you create a font, it's a little bit like creating an object. You have to give it a name. Uh, I'll be using FNT as my prefix, and I'll just call this score. Um, I'll pick a, a font. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take something, uh, whichever. You can pick something different, of course. And I can choose what style, if it has like bold and so forth. Some fonts do, some fonts don't. And I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. And we see a bit of a, a sample of what it might look like in the game here. So I'm actually going to make mine at font size 30 for the moment. And once I'm happy with that, I basically close it off. So I've created a font that I can now use. The next thing we're going to do is create another one of these controllers, which is going to keep track of our score. So I'm just going to create a new object now, and again I'm going to name it. Um, this one will be OBJ Score Controller. There's no sprite for it because it's not going to actually show anything in the game. Um, it's just going to basically keep track of our score. There are other ways you could do that. Uh, there is a built-in score value that you could just use, but I tend to like uh, creating my own. Um, you could create this in the player, for example, and the player keep track of the score but I like uh, doing it as a separate item and I'll explain a couple of reasons why as we go. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is have a create event and in here I'm simply going to start by uh, setting our score value to zero. So um, I'm going to call this uh, player score and I'm going to make it equal to zero so that we start with no score. Okay, that's very easy. The second thing, and this is a new thing, new event, uh, we need to now add the draw event. Now, so far, our player, our object, bullet, and enemy, uh, they automatically draw the sprite for that object on the screen because we chose a sprite for it. What we're actually going to do now is we're going to uh, customize the draw event. And the draw event is basically how it puts something on the screen physically. Um, if you were to do a draw event with, uh, say, an object with a sprite, um, it would stop drawing the sprite for you. So this is one of the reasons why I like to have a separate score control or something that doesn't have to actually show on the screen, because now I'm not worried about drawing the sprite at the same time. So I'm just going to do this in the straight draw event. Um, I'm not going to explain all these other ones at the moment. Uh, you might want to investigate something like the GUI uh, for your own games. It can have some benefits of doing these sort of things in the draw GUI. But I'm just going to stick with the plain draw event for the moment. All right, so as I was saying, this event happens each frame of the game when it tries to draw something on the screen. So what we're going to be drawing is the word score and then the value of our score variable. So there's something that we have to do uh, to do that. So we're going to use a new uh, command draw and we're going to do that with uh, text. And I'm going to just use this draw text string at the moment. 
Now, what we saw is it was expecting uh, three values, the X and Y position to draw this at, and the string that we want to show. So let's start by just putting this at X and Y, and this is gonna be then the X and Y of this object. So even though this object doesn't have an actual visible um, sprite, we're now drawing something at its position. So I'll just go to X and Y for a second, and I'm going to just put my string being the word score with a, a colon on the end, and I put that inside quotes to say that it is a string. So at the moment, it should draw the word score with the colon at the X and Y position of wherever we put this controller object. So let's give that a go. We're gonna put it in our room. So here we go, uh, making sure I'm on an instance layer of some sort. I'm gonna come and put that score controller up here. Sorry, I was dragging a room there. Score controller, there we go. So it is in there. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, we're not getting an error, but it appears that nothing's happening. Now the reason for that, of course, is the default color of text in Game Maker is black. So we're drawing black writing on a black background. So we're not gonna see very much. So that brings us to the next thing we would like to do with our score controller. And in the draw event, we'll go back there. And the next thing we're gonna do is to actually change the color of the text. Now you have to change the color of the text before you draw text to the screen. Um, if you're drawing text in different events of different objects, you might need to make sure that you're changing to the right color just before it. So I like to always change my text color just before my draw text events, just in case um, I've you know, forgotten to change it in another place. That way I know it's gonna be correct. So I'm gonna use another uh, draw command and it's draw set color. And it's expecting a value that represents the color. Now in Game Maker, there's a number of ways you can set a color, um, but the easiest way is just to use one of the built-in variables, which starts with C, lowercase c underscore, and you can see these are constant values or variable names that represent these different colors. So I'm just gonna start with a simple white for the moment, because it should be the easiest for us to see um, over the top of our uh, black background, basically. All right, and you can see it's changed into a proper variable name there. So what this should now be doing is setting the text color that we're about to use to white so that when we draw this, it should show up. So again, let's now give that a try. And now we can see our score word showing up. No score value is showing up, of course, yet. Uh, and also it's looking pretty plain. In fact, it's not even using the font that we've asked it for. So the last thing we're gonna do here is not only set the color, but now we're gonna set the font that we want to use. And like the color, um, I always set my font uh, just as I'm about to use some writing in case, again, I've changed it to a different font in some other place. And here I'm going to use the name of the font that I created earlier. So FNT score, I called it. Okay, notice that's not in quotes because it's a, a variable or an object name basically. So now what it should happen, one last try. So now you can see we've not only got a bigger score and the font size because we set those in the font itself. We set what size and what font it was. So there we have uh, an actual score value, not value, but a score word showing up. All right, so we can show something on the screen, that's great, but we need to show the actual score value. So let's go back to this draw text command for a moment. It expected the X and Y position, which we're using here at the moment, and a single string to show on the screen. Now what we can do is we can actually join or what we call concatenate different strings together to be basically creating one. So it's a bit like an equation where you might join multiple numbers together to eventually have one answer at the end. Uh, we can do something very, very similar, uh, joining different strings together so that the computer sees them 
as one string. So the way that we're going to do that is very, very straightforward, but one minor trick. So you simply, a bit like math, add them together, use the plus sign. And if I had another string, for example, um, it would happily add these two together into one string and then give that to the draw text command. The problem, what I want to do though, is I actually want to take a variable, uh, which is going to be a number possibly, and I want to add that to a bit of text. And you can't add different things like that together. You can't add strings and numbers together. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to take the um, variable that I want to use. So it was play a score. We set that up in the, the um, create event earlier and I need to turn it into a string. And so what I do is I simply wrap that up in the word string, and I don't forget to put my bracket. So what this is doing is saying, take the value of player score, whatever that is, whatever number it is, turn it into a string, and then that means you can add it to your other uh, string here. Um, one quick thing, uh, when you do add, of course, there won't be a space between them, so I do want to just quickly remember to put an extra space here, just because I'd like to have the, the number separated slightly. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so now we can see the word score and the number is showing up. Um, we haven't got any scores actually getting added at the moment, so our number is never going to change, but at least we can again see that it is working. So let's get that number now to actually change. So how are we going to do that? All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to the object enemy um, object. And when we have this collision with the bullet, uh, we're basically going to add something to the score. So what I'm going to do here, just before I destroy it, I just prefer to do things like this before I destroy objects. Um, I'm going to add something to the score controller value. So. The way I can do that is I can actually refer to it um, by putting the name of the object and then a dot and the name of the variable that I want to change. Um, this is going to work because we only have one score controller ever in our game. If we had multiple, uh, that could be a problem. There's another way you'd probably want to do it, but let's just give it a, a go for now. So we're going to say object score controller and you can see it starts coming up, so I'm just going to press tab dot player score. So this is basically allowing us now to access the player score value from the object uh, score controller. And I'm going to say equals, so plus equals, and I'm just going to say 10. Now this plus equals is just a shortcut of saying, take the current value plus this new value and add them together and then put it back in. Um, I could have said object score controller dot player score equals object score control dot play score plus 10 um, and got the same effect, but it's just a bit quicker, of course, to, to write it this way. So now what should happen is every time one of these uh, ships collides with the bullet, it's going to add 10 to my score and then obviously destroy both the bullet and the, uh, the enemy ship. Uh, and of course, because my um, object score controller is drawing the, the value of this uh, player score here, it should actually come up on our screen. So let's have a look at that in practice now. So we started with zero, and if I shoot an enemy, there we go, I've got 10. If I shoot another one, 20, 30, and so forth. So I now have a different, or I have a score value that I can actually show on my screen. The last thing I said I wanted to do here is to add a bit of, not randomness, um, but a bit of different score for each of the ships. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that in this case, and of course there are lots of different ways you might go about this and different deciding what score each one's worth and so forth. But what I'm going to take advantage of is that when um, we created our enemies, we've asked it to set the speed based on a bit of a random choice here. So we're saying a negative 10, so we're moving to the left, we're multiplying that by 
a, a factor basically. So it's either going to be 10 up to basically 15, 1.5 times negative 10 would, would give you negative 15. Um, so I'm going to use the fact of speed and I'm going to use that to change the score value. So the faster ones will be worth a bit more. And in this particular case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where it collided with the bullet. And instead of just saying plus 10, a bit like we did before, I'm going to say times speed. So I'm going to take whatever the speed value is and multiply it by 10. So it could be 10 times 10 as our lowest value or up to 15 times 10, okay? Um, so that's gonna give us anything from 100 to 150 per ship. Now that's a bit much. Um, maybe what we'll do is actually just multiply it by one. So again, we're gonna have between 10 and 15 points for each ship. Let's have a look and see how that works. So now as I shoot these ships, that's a fairly fast one. So that gave me negative 15, negative 26. Can we see the problem here? It is giving us a different value uh, for faster and slower ships. But of course we are negative because our speed is a negative value. So that's a very, very easy thing to do. How do we turn a negative into a positive? Well, we're already multiplying by one here. If we said negative one multiplied by speed, we're essentially saying a negative number multiplied by a negative number. We know that will give us a positive number. Just to be sure, let's have a look. Okay, so now let's see, we shoot that ship and now we've got positive numbers coming out. All right, so we've got the situation of being able to say, hey, different ships, are worth different amounts. Now again, there's lots of different ways you could do this. Uh, you could set some sort of uh, value in the different ships as they get created. Um, I would certainly be looking to make them look a bit different to say, hey, this ship's worth a bit more than the other ship. Uh, but basically we have now a game that gives us a score. And of course that we know that's a major uh, factor in creating a game that is playable. You have to have some way of showing how you're going and whether you're beating your own best or someone else's. We want that competition element of a game that's very important, um, but we now have that ability. So go ahead, add those few extra things in. Uh, we're going to probably just finish off this particular tutorial with a very quick menu system next week uh, so that when we do die, like we just did there, uh, we're not just restarting this part of the game, but we're going back to a, a little bit of a menu. So have a look at that and see how you go.